Welcome back to Face Facts Friday with Colorful Story. We are breaking down chapter six and seven of the Denmark Bessie story. All right, so chapter six opens up with Denmark Bessie and his co-conspirators uh, being arrested between uh, June 18th and June 30th. Um, throughout the halls of the prisons, you could hear prisoners shouting, die like a man. And... No, this is not an opportunity for masculine talk, such as understanding how that idea of dying like a man deals with a whole lot of toxic masculinity. That's not for this discussion. Masculinity during this time meant something completely different from what we know it is today as people begin to unpack what masculinity means. Now, uh, while these shouts were heard throughout the prison, Two things were certain going through their minds. They were going to die and they would not receive a fair trial because most of the people, in fact, all of the people who were trying this case were white and had a very different idea of blackness and how black people should be viewed and treated. Now we can take a look at some of the trials that are going on today and have gone on during our time, uh, during our lifetime and say the same could be true, that most black people do not get a fair trial um, in the United States of America. Plus, they're about to get an all white jury. So, I mean, what can you say in the city of Charleston where there was racial angst? Um, and there were enslaved Africans and there were white people who believed that black people were no more than property. What could you say? Plus the white authorities had the law on their side. They believed that the only punishment that black people should get, especially in the case of an insurrection or possible insurrection because one did not occur, um, would be death. And so they used the Negro Act of 1740, which allowed for severe torture, uh, murder, and the murder of enslaved black people who had broken the law. Basically, it was legalized murder. And let me tell you a few things that are not in the book that explain what the Negro Act of 1740 did. The Negro Act of 1740 made it illegal for black people to move abroad, assembly in large group, assemble in large groups, raise food, earn money, and read and write English. If you broke those laws, you can be tortured or murdered legally. Now, do y'all remember James Hamilton, the mayor of Charleston? He used the Negro Act of 1740 to justify the execution and the torture of the conspirators and Denmark Bessie. And this is why Denmark complained of not having a fair trial because this was something that was not in place when he originally was taken to trial. This is something that James Hamilton decided to enact specifically for this trial. The prosecution argued that the reasoning the reason for using the Negro Act of 1740 was because normal court proceedings were used only for civilized citizens of Charleston. That included not allowing the defense to argue for the right to counsel. They also... Um, couldn't challenge hearsay, which is obscene. Um, and they were not allowed to know the identity of the witnesses. Just all the unfairness. Now the system, yes, system was in place to deny any type of rights that whites had to blacks. And so it put Africans, enslaved Africans in a difficult position, including um, free blacks as well, because Denmark was considered a free black person. Um, ironically, enslaved Africans were viewed as property and person whenever it met the needs of those who were prosecuting them. So um, 
Enslavers, white slaveholders, would argue if they weren't given a fair trial, then the court or the court owed them for the loss of their property. And they could actually sue saying that their property didn't get a fair trial. What? And that's because they felt like if the enslaver wasn't there, um, they didn't have a proper chance to examine the evidence presented against their property. See how racism don't make no sense? The author has an interesting take on this because they said based off of um, his findings when understanding the rules that were put in place by James Hamilton and his judges, this was legalized murder. <laughs> Y'all, this chapter made me so upset. Now, as we switch back to the trial, I just want to say how hypocritical this is. Um, they made it seem like um, Denmark wasn't allowed to know the witnesses, but they made one witness's name available. His name was Frank Ferguson. He said that Denmark was out here urging slaves to join uh, the revolution by seizing weapons from the white population to fight for freedom. I mean, he was, but at the same time, how y'all gonna be hypocritical? How you gonna be hypocritical and let this man's name be known? Interesting. Um, but I want y'all to remember back to a couple of chapters before. Remember that list of names that Denmark had with everybody he was recruiting and how they burned those lists? Yeah. Well. The prosecution decided to say that, oh, Denmark has this list of names of all of the co-conspirators who are involved in this possible insurrection that never happened. Um, and so, unfortunately, they brought this up as a part of the case, but never were able to introduce it into evidence. They also brought up this idea of weapons, right? Never brought their weapons to the trial. So they had no weapons, no list of names. Everything was circumstantial. However, Denmark and his co-conspirators were sent to death by hanging at the gallows with circumstantial evidence. I just found that to be so America. Now, apparently, there was talk of the town and most of the writings that we learn about uh, Denmark are from the white evangelical perspective, which is ironic considering he was a member of a historically African uh, Methodist Episcopal church. And <laughs> this is why we need to tell our own stories. Um, he was interrogated about his faith uh, because they wanted to know what church he belonged to. And of course, the church was ostracized because of it. And unfortunately, black prisoners in the AME church who prayed for him and his lieutenants, they were praying in a way that would have him be delivered. But we know that deliverance would not come. So Denmark and his lieutenants were supposed to be hung um, for their crimes or alleged crimes that never happened. Um, but they weren't hung in the same place that white criminals were hung. They were not hung in the same place that pirates were hung. They were hung off on this place called Blake's Land. And it was like a secluded area. And they did this on purpose because they did not want... Um, black people, free and enslaved, to see Denmark and his lieutenants as martyrs. And they wanted to also take away the idea of there being another chance for an insurrection. They also did not disclose the site where Denmark was buried because um, they didn't want uh, enslaved Africans as well as free black slaves, I'm sorry, free black people to pay their respects to Denmark. So the court took it a step further and decided to punish black people, free and enslaved, for wearing clothes that 
display that they're in mourning for the death of Denmark Vesey and their conspirators and allow for police brutality to run amok. Um, so anybody who was caught wearing clothes that was showing that they were in mourning were beaten, flogged, and then executed. Two weeks after the death of uh, Denmark, three slaves were murdered um, because they retaliated for the death of uh, Denmark Bessie. There were um, 73 slaves that were brought up on charges for conspiracy. Um, a total of 131 people were arrested and um, 35 were sent to their deaths. The book concludes by discussing how, uh, I'm sorry, the chapter concludes by discussing how the system that was put in place to target black people made it so that um, white enslavers, although they didn't before, um, did not view the humanity of enslaved black people and free black people. And so they passed laws that disenfranchised them to make sure that another insurrection would not occur. The final chapters, chapters eight and nine, detail a little bit more about Denmark's um, legacy. And I do encourage you to read that, but I want to give you my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on this book is um, I do like the book. Um, I have formed my opinion on Denmark and I view him as a warrior. I believe that too many times we don't hear the stories of warriors and heroes in the enslaved African uh, narratives. We rarely ever hear about the rebellions and the escapes and what happened after some of those who have been the leaders of these rebellions, what has happened to them and what happened afterwards. So we rarely ever hear about how enslaved Africans fought back after their martyrs were uh, murdered legally. We rarely hear about how the um, enslavers and people without color who had power used that power to change laws that impacted the lives of enslaved Africans. Um, we rarely hear about these stories and I feel like the story of Denmark Vesey needs to be told and it needs to be told from a hero's perspective. Um, thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate y'all taking this journey with me with Denmark, with Denmark Bessie. I will hope, I hope to do more stories moving forward, but this will be my last one for the year. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Denmark Bessie. Is he who you thought he was? If you had already heard about him, is he more than you expected if you've never heard of him? Um, what are your thoughts on rebellions? What are your thoughts on insurrections when it comes from comes at the hands of enslaved Africans. Um, what are your thoughts on heroes when it comes to enslaved Africans? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, so make sure you like, follow, and subs subscribe. And um, I'll be seeing you guys with more stories in 2022. Thank y'all for watching.